Hey there, Mr. Mice is here with the third green shirt video of the day. And in this video, I'm gonna go over rational functions and their horizontal asymptotes, and possibly if there are any holes in the graph and locating the holes in the graph. So let's take a look at the rules for those. We get a hole in the graph when the function can be simplified, but there's still some sort of restriction on x. We'll take a look at that. Our rules for horizontal asymptotes. Now, there are some really algebraic ways to do to find horizontal asymptotes, and if you're in calculus, you're going to want to use limits to talk about those horizontal asymptotes, but or, and to find those. However, there are three rules that you can use to just simply zone in and find the horizontal asymptote without having to do too much algebraic work. So I'm going to focus on those three rules, and that should simplify finding those horizontal asymptotes for you. So the first one is big over little, and we have no horizontal asymptote. So let me tell you what big over little means when I, when I mean by, uh, by big over little. So what I'd like you to do is when you're looking at the rational function, look at the numerator and look at the denominator and zone in on the highest power of x. Um, sometimes called the degree of the polynomial. So you're looking at the highest power of x, and if the highest power of x in the numerator is bigger than the highest power of x in the denominator, then you're not going to have a horizontal asymptote. However, if the highest power of x in the numerator is smaller than the highest power of x in the denominator, then you have my second rule, which is little over big, and in that case, the horizontal asymptote is always going to be y equals zero. Zone in. Look for those powers of x. Lastly, the last case is, what if those powers are the same? What if my highest power of x in the numerator is exactly the same as the highest power in the denominator? Well, it's really not that hard. You take a look at the coefficients. So it's just going to be y equals the coefficient of a, the coefficient of the numerator, divided by the coefficient of the denominator. And we'll take a look at an example just of that in just a second. So let's take a look at my first example. And we have f of x equals x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. Well, the first thing you should say to yourself always is, can I factor this? The big F word of mathematics is factor. Can I factor it? Well, yes, you can. x minus 3 over x minus 3 times x plus 3 using a difference of 2 squares. Notice here that x minus 3 and x minus 3 simplify out, and I have f of x equals 1 over x plus 3. If I was to find the vertical asymptote of this, I know that from watching my previous video, my vertical asymptote would be x equals negative 3. Well, something happened here. If I plug positive 3 in for x in my original function, which coincident, which I should tell you now, you always have to consider the original function. Even after you simplified, what did my original function look like? Plug in 3 for our original function. We get 3 minus 3, which is 0. And 3 squared, 9 minus 9, which is 0. 0 divided by 0 is it's actually called indeterminate. We don't, we can't determine what that is. It's, it's even worse than taking a number divided by zero because, you know, that might, you know, Chuck Norris can do that. Nobody can do this. It's indeterminate. Zero over zero. So if it can't be determined, three cannot be in our domain. So what do we do? Well, in order to denote that three is also not in our domain, we make a hole in the graph and we just write, we just make a, an open circle, we're graphing this, a hole in the graph at that point where x equals 3. So we're going to write, there's a hole in the graph at x equals 3. More specifically, 3 comma 1 6. Now how did I get 1 6? I plug 3 in my simplified function and I got 1 over 6. So there's a hole in the graph there. Now let's turn our attention to the horizontal asymptotes. My next example, f of x equals x cubed minus 1 over x squared. Now remember, begin the video, 
I said we want to focus our attention on the highest power of x in the numerator and the denominator. Let's take a look. Highest power of x is 3, x cubed. Highest power of x, x squared. Big over little. Big over little, no horizontal asymptote. So we would just say none, not applicable, doesn't have one. We move on. F of x equals 3x squared minus 1 over 2x to the fifth plus 4. Again, zone in on the highest power of x, x squared, x to the fifth. The bottom is bigger than the top. Little over big always is going to have horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. y equals 0. That's it. Move on. f of x equals 5x to the 4th minus 6x plus 1 over 7x to the 4th minus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 3. Again, zone in on the highest power of x. Highest power of x here is x to the 4th. Highest power here is x to the 4th. They're the same. The same we're going to take simple guys it's simple just look at the numbers in front of the highest power of x the coefficients five seven the horizontal asymptote is going to be five sevens y equals five over seven that's it that's it just look at those coefficients and you're done if you follow those rules You'll always be successful in finding those horizontal asymptotes. All right, that's it for this one. See you next time.